Camera one's rolling. Camera two's rolling. Audio's live. And we're... Phones are off. Yes. And you have... Yeah, yeah. like, yeah, playing with... Doesn't matter, there'll be no fucking signal. No, uh, it's a bit like a compound in here. Yeah. If uh, Putin invades, we'll be the last to know about it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's why the electricity's off. That was what my immediate thought... My media thought was protecting my tinned goods. <laughs> <laughs> soon as soon as you have a lot of tinned goods, I like a stock pipe. Well, I know, but well, yeah, I've got a bunch. I started after Brexit, just didn't stop. <laughs> no, like, my plan tin goods of the future, yeah, currency. Are we going? Wait, yeah. am, I, am I on? Yeah, yeah, we're all so I've gone from being like we like to, yeah, that's oh, go again. Hello, 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 hello. Hello? Can you hear yourself? No. Is it the one with the dodgy cable? Hello? Hello, 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 hello. I mean, I can hear you. Can you? I've got you now as well. Who cares? Let's do it. That part rolling. Let's do it. Batter on. <laughs> How are you for time today, Dave? I, just, I know it's 10 to 7 already. It's 10 to 7. <laughs> nah, I'm nah, fine. We are recording. Okay, so episode... Episode ten or eleven or something. Yeah, I think we've, we've just probably we've probably had double digits. Had double figures. Uh, today we're joined by Dave, aka Ferrero Rossi. Hello. Uh, <laughs> of Air's finest artist school. Hello. And this class wee dog, Franco. I don't know if you can see him on the camera, but oh, like a fun boy in Bond villain. <laughs> <laughs> no, why is shot? Stroking the pup. It'll, be, it'll look really weird in the camera if you can't see the dog and you're your left arm is losing it. Rubbing my thigh. <laughs> you're stroking the wee thigh. But we'll, we'll, we'll get to the photos towards the end of this, but uh, Franco does feature a number of times, <laughs> and uh, I had to remind myself that the focus was on you, not the dog. <laughs> yeah, I lost that focus. If it's that. Look, take, take this photo. It's really cool. It looks really cute, doesn't it? But no, it was a, a nice, uh, a nice sort of. I'm going to say distraction, but distraction is not the right word. Yeah. Just nice, different turn of pace Aye. to our normal. More like a, having it's, a double act in front of you. Yeah. It was, and... it was difficult to get everyone coordinated at the same time. Because uh, yeah. I was going through my photos, and Daryl's done a very good job of it, where you and Franco are aligned and you're both looking in the same direction, things like that. Whereas Franco was always doing something, looking the wrong way, or when he was looking the right way, you were looking the wrong yeah. way. Yeah. So my he, he also he can also sense cameras, I feel, because there's a lot of times he's doing something with super cute. I hate all dogs are like this, but you get you like take your phone out of your pocket dead dead gently, try not to distract them. As soon as you get it open, open the camera, he's like Shh. Yeah. Doing something else. Because we tried to get a nice one of them sniffing some of the flowers that are down by the <laughs> beach and uh, yeah, he, he wasn't for it as no. the camera was there. No, I did it once. <laughs> you don't get it the first time, you don't get it. <laughs> Perfectionist do it one time. That would have been such a good one as hell with a rose. Aye. Mm, it was a shape. Aye. At least, we, at least we saw it. How old's uh, Franco? Like probably now nineteen weeks. 19. 19, I think. Nice. That's around that. Look at that. What a sick. I know, he's such a wee, he has a wee sook. Have you ever uh, painted or tried to paint animals? I, I painted them, um, I've done, so we've got another dog, got another dog in the house called Ralph, and he's an old, a lovely old guy with a lovely old grey beard. Um, and I painted him a few years ago. He's the only animal I've painted that wouldn't, I only painted them because I look at him intensely quite a lot so he's yeah. like, like I didn't I didn't have to try very hard and it's probably my favourite painting uh, that I've done in terms of how it technically came out came out you know it wasn't like it's not it's, it's a good painting and I you know I don't I don't always say that about my stuff but it looks tons like him and it's behind the, behind them there's a kind of a lot of cheese right like uh, the background's like holy cheese or like Swiss cheese whatever you want to call it because um, we me and the family we affectionately call him Ralphie Cheeseman <laughs> he's obsessed with cheese. He can hear. He can tell when you. He can. He can tell the difference between you opening the fridge and taking out, like the, for example, the milk or the juice or something. And if you grab the cheese, like he knows the sound of a packet of cheese. That kind of you open the fridge, you take something that he, he doesn't give a fuck. What? He won't. Oh, All cheese. Any cheese. Any cheese. Any cheese. I mean, obviously, we use the same cheese a lot in the house, so he gets used to the sounds. I suppose, like the plastic for the parmesan or yeah. the know and then the kind of wrapper for the cheddar and everything. So he's, he's lo he claims to be losing his hearing, but he can still hear when you're opening a packet of cheese. Ralphie Cheeseman. Ralphie Cheeseman, aye. So the painting's called something stupid, like, um, 
if I don't look at the cheese, I might get the cheese. So he's staring straight forward, yeah. and the cheese is right there, taunting him. Um, and it, it's I had it, we had it up in the house for a long a long time, but then I put it in an exhibition, in a, a pets a pets exhibition, a competition, thinking I'm going to breeze this, I'm going to win this easy, <laughs> finally win something for that, and uh, and it didn't win. And I've, I've never exhibited another painting since. <laughs> All right. I honestly haven't. I actually haven't done anything since. So I took it poorly. Um, but one day I'll one day I'll paint. Once Frank was probably fully grown, I'll probably do probably do a picture of him. I think. Mm-hmm. But he's when we first got him, like I've got a few brilliant photos of him as a puppy because he he does this really amazing thing. He wears his his ears like a wee hat, like they come forward. Like, right. Yeah. So, He's kind of stopped doing that, and I'm worried that he won't do it when he's older. So I might just have to paint him as a puppy, does so Rob, I can do the. Uh, does Franco have a nickname as well? Uh, well, he, when we first got him, so me and me and my wife Natasha drove down to pick him up uh, down south, and um, it was a present for um, my stepdaughter Esme for her tenth birthday, no, eleventh birthday. It's eleven, just last month or something, two or three months ago. So we went and got him, with knowing that we couldn't properly name him, uh, because it was going to be Esme's choice kind of thing. And uh, so we were calling him Mister Whippy for a, a wee while because the day that we went down, we we, we was a kind of near the beach, and we went and got a whippy. And All right, I thought it was. I thought it was a whippy. Just having it. Was... Well, uh, technically, because he's a whippet, we we thought it worked worked really well. So we were calling him Mister Whippy for a while, and now now he's just called what well, we called him Franco. Um, after a football and not the not the Spanish dictator. Right, okay. I, I have to say I've said that I have to say that to so many for them. I actually I met um, a friend of mine that had a Spanish friend with them. I was down picking up the kids after school and a uh, friend was like, Oh Franco, Franco and her friend was like, Your dog's called Franco in Spanish accent like, yeah, was like Franco Brazy though, not 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 your not your Franco. It's not like calling my dog Adolf or I wouldn't or something, you know what I mean? Yeah, so he's named after Franco Berese. From my point of view, I don't believe that's exactly how it went down, but we now call him Franco Whippy. It's nice. Still, Mr. Whippy's still, still his, I think it's still his name of pets at home. He's registered the pets at home. Like yeah. his wee card that says Mr. Whippy, so he gets mail. He gets mail through the door. <laughs> Mr. Whippy. You know, Take out yeah, You never remember see his. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, when you said the... <clears throat> I've got have something audio, by the way, like in my, my ears. Um, oh, that's it. When you said it was your favourite painting, like, is there something about it that made it your favourite, or is it just kind of like, is it sentimental value as well as technique? Or? It's probably a bit of both. It's probably a bit of both, but it, it really looks like them. Like mm-hmm. it's like um, when it comes to portraits, human or animal, I've, I've never, I've never excelled at it. It's not my, it's not my favourite thing to do. Find find human faces particularly tricky. Um, so do we. Yeah, <laughs> and I love them. That's pretty much mine, but but mine would have colour. Yeah. <laughs> They'd look exactly the same. Mate. <laughs> I find it really difficult, and I find it. Um, I think it's maybe uh, with when it comes to the Franco, the sorry, the Ralph. Um, forgive me, Ralph. Uh, the Ralph painting. I think it's a mixture of the fact that I couldn't quite. Sometimes I surprise myself with painting that that's because I'm still. I mean, I've always been painting since like two thousand either 15 or 16 okay so i still i'm still at the point that I'm, i can still surprise myself and when i finished the alpha one and i put the wee the wee highlights on the eyes and just made it look super real uh, he's gone a wee bit more gray since then so i feel like i'll probably have to do it do another one at some point but um i i think it's a it's a bit of both it's a you know i spent a lot of time doing it i also don't really do that when i'm painting it was a labor of love <laughs> Like a real, it really was. Like I, I really thoroughly enjoyed every, every stroke. So, um, by probably a bit of both technical, technical brilliance, <laughs> and pure love. They're a good combination. So do you layer it up with painting? Like I've seen a couple of people do animal portraits for like drawing, like with like coloured pencils and stuff. Right, I up and finish off like the whiskers and the whites and the eyes. Is that the same with painting or? To a degree, I. I mean, I think with the pencils, with pencil. Well, I've, I've got a few friends that do that. Um, it's just that hyper realistic colour mm. pencil stuff. Like, mm. I can't remember what they're called. Those pencils have got a specific name, but they um, 
it blows my mind. But uh, paint, I guess it's kind of the same. Well, oil, oil paint's probably a wee bit more forgiving and, and things like pencils and stuff. So I mean, you do definitely always take always take a, uh, photos of every stage of the painting I'm working on as well. Then um, with that one, I, I mean, it started out with just like a black outline, effectively. Right. And then you just keep adding and panic and saying hoping that it comes that it all comes together in the end and it, it, thankfully in that case it did but i actually had people ask to buy it yeah i which i find so, so fucking I, I, so I, I considering yeah it's your daughter yeah. is it in do you have it displayed in the house i no i did until the exhibition and it's been sitting in my studio right in, in a bag since since the exhibition but i keep meaning to take it home because we've got a spot for it i just don't have the uh, hardware i haven't put it back up yet but it, it, it should be up in the house i yeah it will remain there they're just it's very. Str- I mean, I, I love it. I love that folk want to. I love when folk want to buy any painting. They um, kind of like if so if you painted like a member of your family or something. Someone, yeah. Thought, Can I buy that? Very personal to you. Weird. How how, how much of your own artwork do you, do you have in your own house? I say this because I I always feel slightly not arrogant necessarily. I'm not quite sure what the emotion is, but when you order a photo that you've taken, you get it printed out and framed, and you hang it in your own house. Obviously, there's a connection. They usually that's to a, a person or a place. Yeah. But you're also saying by putting that thing on a particular wall that this this you're but you're discounting a lot of other things that could have gone there. Aye. In preference for this thing. Yeah, yeah. And, and when I when people come into the house because in we, my girlfriend and I moved in recently or the last three years, so it was a super cheap way of getting things on walls. Aye, of course. But. When people come in now and they look at it and say, oh, did you take that? I was like, and that, and that, <laughs> and all that wall over there. <laughs> and it's like, you oh. I mean, up in it, failing. Oh. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> it genuinely, it genuinely sets aside the computer, which I edit these uh, podcasts on. <laughs> well, I accidentally um, broke that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so we moved, me and the family moved into our house last, this, uh, March last year. So we're still in that, We've got a yeah. few things up. I, I believe I've got one. Yeah, I've got one thing of mine that's up, but it's it's just that is it was something we did for um for my wife's birthday a few years ago at our old place. We had a friends themed party, and um so everyone came dressed as a favourite friends thing, um and oh, I, yeah. I went as Mister Heckles. Oh, that's a really obscure one. Yeah, the old the other guy up there. Yeah, he has the room. Yeah, yeah. And he's right. like, I could have a cat. That guy. Um, <laughs> my two my two choices for that party actually were both. I I, I, I wanted to do both, but the other one was going to be, you know, the bit when uh, are you big fans of Fred? You do what? Yes, sure. I've seen it no. all. So the when Ross finds out that Marcel, the monkey, isn't dead, that it's been sent off to Hollywood or whatever. In Hank area, the guy who does like Homer Simpson and that, he's in the zoo and he's sweeping up and he's just walking about sweeping up and being dead kind of yeah. arm. Yeah, I know information you know. about your monkey. That was going to be my mate, my costume. And my <laughs> wife was like, you can't just go randomly up, like cutting about the party, brushing up and telling full stories about their monkey. So I went, <laughs> chose Mr. Heckles. But the, without a doubt, though, the best, the, the best outfit that night, I think, uh, was the wonderful and your previous guest, Ian White. Uh, oh, yeah? Your tons. <laughs> I turned up, man, and I'm like, oh, everyone, and we're all, you know, we've all grown up with friends, we're all, we're really well, well versed in it, and I just couldn't figure out what the who he was fucking meant to be, right, and he's like, he was all in white, effectively, he came dressed in white, and he had some face paint on, and it took, it took, in fact, I didn't even take me a while to figure it out, I had to ask him, and he finally told us it was the, he was the big white plastic dog that, what, well, the I in the house, which I just thought was the most, Bonkers. Uh, between that and my cousin John, who dressed up as the half and half Ross, the sunburn, um, yeah, sunburn thing. But the so anyway, that party I did the for the one of the doors. I just did a quick acrylic painting of uh, that frame that they had round the people. Yeah, on the door I did that. So that's the only thing that I've got <laughs> of all my paintings. Is that a wee golden frame round the purple yeah, door or something? Yeah, yeah. So that's that's what we've got. I've got that up in the hallway in the house for some reason. But that's where Ralph will go when I finally remember mm. to bring them back for the studio but most of the work in my in our house and when i say most we've only got like five things six including the frame thing that i painted but we've got five things and four of those things are by roddy mckenzie who's a local uh, madman from croy 
down to the legs of Bray Gallery. Yeah, yeah. So, um, it was there the other week, oh, I think. Man, he's, he's, un, he's unbelievable, man. So I've got, I got a birthday present for my 40th from my wife and a bunch of my friends all chipped in because uh, his stuff's not cheap. They're saying it shouldn't be as incredible. Uh, but there's a painting of a photo he took out the front of his car when he was driving really fast down the electric bay at night. So it's like this kind of blood road. It's fucking incredible. It's one of the first paintings that I ever remember seeing a Roddy's when I first met him. And it's both like one of three that I, I, I hope that I wanted to own. And there's another two that I hope to own at some point. But I need to save my turn my turn 50 or whatever it is. It's a good birthday away from that. But, um, so I've got like most more Roddy's than more Roddy's than mine certainly, but that's only because we, as I say, we moved house last year and I haven't finally made any big decisions. Mm. But the, the previous house I had a bunch of stuff up in, but kind of gets stale after a while and the kind of thing I might as well try and sell that and, and nobody buys it and then you're like, well, just oh, that's not you know I do sell I, I do sell work, but the sell, sell, mm-hmm. yeah, some of them do sell. But the ones that I had in the house have been they were quite big and they're, they're a bit garish. Like tulips, but the aye, I don't know why. I, don't know why I even mentioned that I tried to sell them. It's kind of what you do, but yeah, <laughs> it's like, apparently it's the whole point. It's the whole point of actually painting them. I think is to try and get other folk to put them up on their walls. But yeah, share it. Yeah, but sometimes you want to keep them. Something. I uh, Roddy's gallery is cool. Like cause I, I saw a few. I went for like my Lynn Sink. She's done the oh, si, yeah, yeah, siren call aye. as well. You're, you're involved with the brewing as well, right? Or? Yeah, yeah. And I've also also got a can. Also done, oh, yeah? Done a painting on a can, I. Um, there's myself, Lynn, and Roddy have all done uh, beer labels for the brewery. Nice. Um, I said, cool. I did one for a beer called IC Badgers. Okay. And the painting was a... I went through a wee phase of painting with a squeegee a few years ago, and I did this one painting that... It, it just looked like a bunch of badgers having an orgy. So <laughs> and the, the painting's called. It tastes like that. Yeah, well, the, I've never actually drank it. The the painting's called Badger Orgy. And my uncle, who's the, who's the head brewer, loved it so much that I gave him it. And he, then he's, my cousin, his son stole it and it's now in his home studio. Nice. But the, they get used for the artwork and we weren't allowed to call it. I wasn't. I tried to. Like you need to call it Badger Orgy. The beer must be called Badger yeah. Orgy, but it's... That would sell well. I thought it would say that would be a good name for a beer. Yeah, if we were in Glasgow, it would have worked. Yeah. You know, one of those cool Glasgow breweries, but... Yeah, I so the the brewery, we've, we've tried... We've, Roddy's got one, as I say, Lynn's got one. Tried to... You know, I know we get this on, but... <laughs> yeah, Portrait IPA. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I mean, it would work. I've seen worth labels, I'll tell you. I've seen worth labels. So um, when you're saying that you you know you have like stuff up in your studio and stuff, mm. what where is your studio like? How how do you find having that? And how long into painting was it before you made the jump to get a studio? That's a good question. I think um, I think it was two years, two years that since I started painting that I needed a studio. It was mm. more it was the, the necessity of it more than anything. It was the storage the storage aspect. And I dotted about, I tried to find, if I, you know, chasing up somebody saying, oh, this person will give you some studio space. You go and go and talk to them and you walk into the place and it must have seen about a dozen places that were just like, you can't even offer this as a painting studio. <laughs> there's, there's people just cutting about, you know, it's not, there's no security, there's no nothing. So I finally get, um, finally got my place on Old Bridge Street. Okay. So like right above where the joke shop used to be. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. So in fact, when I first moved in, there was a big box of, stuff from the joke shop yeah i and I, I kept what was i kept all the good stuff and just been the rest of it but stink bombs there was sadly no stink bombs. No. those were a favorite as emily's oh my god they were so so much fun man not fun if, I, if you get hit by one but <laughs> i the so i've got the top floor um is my studio and so i've got quite a bit of space i actually used to rent one of the rooms out to one of my friends or two of my friends sorry and um but it's now they're now out and it's just all, all mine again. And then downstairs we've now got a gallery. Mm. Uh, me, Roddy McKenzie from Croy, and a couple of other artists, Wendy Bibby and Alan McNally. So Wendy does like screen print or print print making. And Alan does watercolours. Cool. Roddy does mental oil painting. Yeah. Through a mirror. Paints. Oh yeah? I've got to see because you've got that post on Instagram showing you to try it. Trying it. Ah, it's impossible. <laughs> fucking impossible. I mean, the guy's an absolute sorcerer. Um, 
so he like he looked through that like he looked in the mirror there yeah and, paint like that. and what and he what, paints better than anyone i've ever met and he doesn't you know he's like, what, what you gain through that as a method perspective right okay so much fucking pers- <laughs> uh, sorry that's a terrible reference it's <laughs> a great reference it's a great film um, the, uh, what was it from? Spinal Tap. Ah, oh, right. Uh, yeah, when they're in the front standing at Presley's grave. Right. I had that, yeah, I had that video of that and never watched it. Don't oh, know it's, it's incredible, man. Um, aye, well, it's not a good sidetrack with Spinal Tap. But, uh, aye, so I, I, it basically started out as um, he had a wee studio when he was at art school back in the 80s. And he had this wee studio in an attic in Mary Hill and he had no space. So he'd start by... You know, he'd be painting against the canvas and then he'd have a mirror set up behind him and he'd look at the um to give him the, the step back, if you know what I mean, because he didn't have enough space to take his No, he couldn't actually get further, yeah. Nah, which you need to a lot of the time with painting, so... And then he said he just got bored or couldn't be bothered moving his head quite so much, so he just... Just, just continued. ...started doing that, and it's, it's mental. I've watched him do it. I've tried it a dozen times. I can hardly get a brush to touch the canvas. It's, it's yeah. absolutely insanity. And it's the, the paintings he comes away with from doing it's bonkers, man. Look, guys, he's a, a well a well hidden secret, sadly, because he should be way more successful than than he currently is. But he has got he's very successful, but he's, he should be well more well known, should I say? Is that due to lack of self promotion, or what's the holdback there? Do you it's think? Or did he prefer? He might, maybe prefers to be somewhat to have some sort of anonymity. Yeah, I think. He, well, he, he does like the fact he does like being left alone to paint. Like, yeah. I think like a lot of painters they would just love to be left alone to paint as much as possible and I know the Roddy's kind of like that but at the same time you know you, you also need to sell your work and sadly these days you need to be very online for selling work and Roddy's just can't be bothered with, with all that, that stuff mm. I mean he's he's they've got the internet but he doesn't I don't really use it so he's um, I, I mean I, I, he, he definitely I mean, he's he's definitely had a lot of success over his career. He he, he did he has had pe- periods when he sold quite a lot of work for quite a lot of money, but mm-hmm. and I just kind of down at Croy, quite hard to get to as well. Yeah, you know. So it's uh, that was one of my thinkings about getting or one of my reasons, sorry, for getting trying to get us all together in town because Roddy's all the way down in Croy. Wendy's based in I think Maybole when Allen's a place that. Colmenel, I don't even know. Yeah, is, you know, I know where that is. Is it, yeah. is it, is it Ayrshire? It is, it's South Ayrshire, it's in uh, Stinshire. It's not far from Ballantry. Oh, is that right? It's Ballantry, in Ayrshire? Yeah. Is it? Just, just. I always thought that was like, like a, a, a TV show or something. <laughs> <laughs> Ballantry. Oh, actual, oh, Ballantry. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Meant to be fair, uh, No, but Ballantry's a lovely little spot. Um, well worth a walk. Ah, is that right? Yeah. Well, you can walk there for a year. But if you've got time, all right, <laughs> you can walk anywhere. Yes, you know, yeah, suppose, yeah. But really, but the old Stephen Wright joke or something, I think, isn't it? Aye, everywhere's uh, walking. Distance. Everywhere's walking distance. Best <laughs> in the world. Um, uh, aye. So being pals with Roddy and stuff like, who got you into painting? Well, well, I met Roddy not long after I'd started painting. Right, he was the first artist that I met, I think. And it, and it was actually off the back of a really long walk with me and my wife at uh, uh, that time. Palantry. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> and at that time, she was my girlfriend. And one of our first things that we did together, actually, we, me, Natasha, and Ralph went for a walk from te- Denewer to, to Croy. We got the bus to Denewer. And then from there, we walked along the coast to, to Croy. But mm-hmm. it got super sketchy at one point because we didn't time it right at all. Yeah. The water was coming in and everything. And I'm petrified of the sea like petrified oh yeah like, oh, I, like, any water actually any water that's i don't like water but the sea particularly terrifies me because like i don't have any interest in what's in it and i don't i don't want to be in it that those are the two things i know like, the, the things that are in it terrify me and being in it is equally it's so it's so violent <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like it comes crashing against what rocks and that and folklore oh, is beautiful and you're like fucking terrifying so it got sketchy we finally made it to Croy and uh, met Roddy and uh, introduced myself as we're trying to get a business opportunity with him because well, he's having he's having these evenings events and all that kind of stuff and I'm like well, we've got a brewery you should mm. you know you should use a beer kind of thing and then through that he he put two and two together and figured out that I was also a painter because he'd heard about me or something through 
I think through some YouTubes. Um, but it get in terms of who got me into painting, I, I get. Um, I, I was. Uh, I had. I went through a bit of a phase of wanting to be a writer for quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, probably for about ten years. So a wee bit more than a phase, maybe. But and it was going all right. You know, I, I could. I could write and stuff. But I tried to write a book about a trip that I, I, I went on to North America, and uh, I got a really terrible. I got a really terrible, uh, what would you call it, response from a publishing house. This guy took my, <laughs> this guy took something really serious or personally, like my, my lack of technical ability, I guess, would probably be the mm. thing. Like, um, you know, like, because I wasn't like Hemingway or something, they took it fucking really personally. And I mean, not everyone can be fucking brilliant, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, the story's really good though, you know. It's, and uh, But no, nah, he, was, he was a total dick about it and I actually ended up making me, Gave me like writer's block, which mm. um, I've never ever managed to get past. I've never, I, I mean, I haven't tried in a while to be fair. But even when I was, I've had to write a few things out over the last few years, and even writing stuff out, it's like coming up went off the top of my head feels impossible now. Like whereas years ago it was, it was like second nature. And, uh, and after a bit, maybe I don't know, maybe three or four months, maybe slightly longer. Uh, I found some paints that in my mum's my mum's bit that she'd been at a painting. She'd done some painting lessons or something a few years prior. Yeah. So I just stole those paints and been started messing about. So your kind of need to be creative kind of went from writing. You had the bad experience yeah. and you kind of funneled it into. Aye, yeah. Because I tried. I, I even when I was younger, I even wrote some songs. You know, I tried. You know, I knew that I knew that I had a, a, a create a creative spark. I just didn't. I really wanted it to be music. <laughs> you really. Yeah. I really wanted it to be music. I still, I still do. It. Still hope that one day I'll find the instrument that even I can play. But as it as it stands, I haven't been able to play any of them. But the uh, painting, painting came to me the way that I wish uh, music had, uh, I suppose, had mm -hmm. come to me. So uh, it was, it felt dead natural. I was still learning everything. You know, I'm still very definitely learning. But I taught my, I pretty much taught myself how to paint by doing landscapes. Like just mm -hmm. obsessively painting landscapes. Like doing like four or five a day. Just like sitting in my room, I was at the time I was single. I had a bar job that I was, you know, I was doing bare minimum as I could, and just sitting about, fucking smoking and small weed and painting landscapes, mm -hmm. like just until I felt confident enough to, you know, try something else. And then from that point, I went into so weird. It got really weird after a while. We went like. like, like uh, like self portraits and cheeseburgers and space. Yes, I think the, the burgers were the one that's since. Oh yeah, the fresh air thing. Yeah, yeah, that was the there was a burger. Was that the the self portrait? Was that the one the the genetic lottery? There's a oh the no no that's that, that's a portrait. Uh, that's actually a portrait of King Charles. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, the first sense of the, the caption. Bro managed to lose and win the yeah. genetic lottery in one go. What's yeah. been um. Yeah, no, that's that's a whole other kind of weirdness. Um, that was a, a recent. Is that a Hunter S. Thompson line? No, no, no. It was a, a no, one hundred percent me. So there is some well, real we fantastic, some talent thought. in the writing. Then, if you're yeah, hearing yeah, the two, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. Um, I, I love Hunter S. Thompson. He's one of my. I've got a Hunter S. Thompson quote on my on my. Oh, head. it sounded Hunter S. Thompson ish. Yeah, oh, right, amazing. Well, that's pretty much that's. If, you know, in terms of my writing, that's I was. Uh, uh, that's probably why I was never going to be any good at writing because I wanted to be. I wanted it to be like Hunter S. Thompson, as I think the kind of young guys that write do, especially our, my generation or whatever, they were too heavy into, too heavy into Hunter S. Thompson. They're like, yeah, I'm just gonna, gonna just do drugs and drink and write, try and be like Hunter S. Thompson, and you're like, it's, there's only one of them for a reason. Yeah, there's not many people could survive that lifestyle. No, not even he could. What's his right to gonzo journalism or something? Gonzo. That's it, right? Yeah, yeah, just putting himself, just pure ego, but putting himself right in the heart of the story. Like it's something like it's wild, man. Like he, but I'm, I've got, when I get into someone, I get massive, I get obsessive about it, right? So one of rest Thompson, I get stupidly into him. Same way, uh, full of Howard Tunes and, and all these, all these kind of weird American guys. But the Hunter Thompson, when he did, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas was the first thing that I ever saw the film. Yeah. Saw the film first, then read the book. And um, it turns out that I found out not long after that, that Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas was meant to be like a 150-word caption. Well, not even a 150-word caption, it'd be a caption. 
which then get made to be a little bit wanted to be like 150 words synopsis effectively or whatever of this race, this bike race in Vegas. And then he wrote what he wrote and they were like, well, we're going to have, we're going to have to put it out. <laughs> well, yeah. We will release it, but it wasn't what they asked for. Certainly, you know, he just went, uh, Yankee referred to it as one of his biggest failures because he was meant to go and, you know, he changed, he changed the the course of journalism forever mm -hmm. but, you know he felt it was a failure which i think is fucking hilarious yeah so yeah so good. could all have those kind of failures would all be a, all be very lucky <laughs> and do you know who does the because i know in like fear and loathing and stuff it's got quite a distinct like the illustrations yeah um i think it's that the for the book and a lot of those books it was ralph steadman right who's still going Still, still living, still working. The total, a total legend. He was probably as unhinged as as Hunter Thompson. I think he's Welsh. I think that's, I think that's his vibe. And he's, there's a really nice film actually. I can't remember which one it is, but Steadman. It's a BBC thing, and he actually he travels out to go and meet back up with him because they, oh, cool. they kind of get forced together to do this um, horse race coverage in the Kentucky Derby. Mm -hmm. And he wrote a thing called the Kentucky Derby is decadent and depraved. And it's wild, man. Like it's like it's completely and utter insanity. And they get put together. With, like, I think at that point, Ralph Steadman was doing like fairly kind of, uh, still very artistic, but but not not bonkers. But he was doing stuff for like pretty serious magazines, like pretty high highbrow magazines and that. And he get lumped in with Thompson to do this Kentucky Derby thing, and they just basically started taking everything doing everything and then wrote this horrifying account of a of a horse race in so the south the southern states and yeah, that was them best best friends for the rest of that oh, the rest of thompson's life certainly unfortunately but the uh, incredible Stead, steadman's a real in influence like especially the when i started doing all that pen stuff recently with the mm. the the genetic lottery thing the, the it's impossible to write where quill or whatever they're called a nib an ink an ink thing <laughs> if, <laughs> i don't know the words for stuff i didn't go to art school but you know those wee sharp things that you plug in you dip it in ink mm -hmm. yeah and nib. right we'll call them nibs when you write with one of them it looks it's impossible to not make it look like ralph steadman okay like it, it really and then unless it's just because i subconsciously i'm like well you know i'm gonna mm -hmm. make it look like ralph so maybe i'm doing it intentionally but um but it, it, it's it, no one ever pulls it up though. I always get told it looks like Quentin Blake. Yeah, I've been told that a bunch. Oh, it's the old Dow guy, right? Dow guy, which is also very possible that, and that's how influence this works. I suppose. I mean, we've all grown up with old Dow books. I suppose. Can I ask while you're talking about influence? Because mm. I, I really liked your take on the the Castle quote about artists stealing, but a lot of people misinterpret it as I like good artists steal. No, good art. Good artists borrow great artists steal. Yeah, I think is the quote, and it's always used whenever somebody gets accused of plagiarism right on the internet, which is which is not as frequent as it should be because mm -hmm. there's a lot of plagiarists getting away with. It. There's a lot of people doing stuff that they shouldn't be getting away with, and uh, the that quote comes up in folk art. All art is steel. Great art is steel. Picasso said that in a little. Well, apparently, I don't think it was Picasso that said that originally. I'm not sure. Can guarantee that, but. It's it's more it's as we have written. It's just one of those things that if you take it on the surface, yeah, it means you know going you know I, I'll, I'm going to copy that you know I'm going to copy that picture and sign my name on it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but what it means is that the best way for me to, to describe it is I've got a series of paintings that I've done with post-it notes. Yeah, but since since the cheeseburgers, the only motif that I've ever kind of focused in on. Back in the day, I got obsessed with wanting to paint cheeseburgers. I tried to make the until I could really nail it. Post the notes of the same thing, like it took me ages, like fucking nailed, get get it nailed right. So I, I started painting post the notes because of a painter that I follow, an incredible painter. And it's actually the only other person's work that I've got up in the living room is a print of this, this painter's work. She's called Shanna Levinson, she's from America. And um, it, it's stuff, her stuff's incredible, like it's really incredible. She paints lace. She paints a lot of stuff, but the one the series that I got print from uh, from my wife's birthday, and it's a uh, it's a lace. I think it's actually the I think it's a self portrait. You can't see her head though, but it's like a lace dress and a hand with the nail polish, and that just looks fuck. Looks like a photograph. It's incredible. And she did a painting once with a bit of paper 
taped uh it, it looked like a bit of paper was taped to what we cut out of a bird or something like okay. something like that and i i saw that painting and it, it's, it was and it was obviously in my head one day and i'm like i don't fucking paint you know i was stuck i occasionally would stick post the nose to my paintings anyway if i had an idea and i didn't want to get into it at that point i'd stick mm. it to it and fuck off and do something else for a while and because uh, i'm very forgetful still <laughs> and need to leave myself notes sometimes um and a, a combination of the post that seeing the post that note and then remembering that painting with what looked like that paper stuck to it that that's what that's what whoever it was that said that quote meant about great artists steal yeah like you take in like take in everything like everyone does that's how the brain works and what comes out is either your honest attempt at being original or plagiarism it's like there's no doesn't it's really a line, there's isn't really any grey area like it's, it is a really fine line so the, the best you can do I think is like to try and try and be original I suppose like that's uh, you're not it's it's not often possible because every, it feels at times that everything's been done yeah <laughs> it really does like where can you go from here kind of thing was it the difference between that though and jumping on a bandwagon I mean, social media is terrible for it you see someone does something original and great yeah and then it's all you see for the next two weeks I think yeah. someone else bucks the trend and does something over there. Yeah. And people have a tendency to hammer things home too hard. Yeah. And also, there's people that can afford to promote their work where other artists can't. So there's currently, actually, there's a, um, there's a bit, it's not really even a thing, I suppose. It is on a very tiny, tiny area on the internet. But there's this, there's this guy who started painting rothko's and writing on it fake rothko and then other things like fake rothko fake rolex fake orgasm all that kind of stuff uh, you know what his, his stuff's all the other stuff that he does is it's, it's pretty goofy I, I love it you know i think his, his stuff's great it's just it's, it's daft and um you know you guys get a bit of a following probably got a few thousand followers i can't remember exactly but then there's this girl that's popped up on instagram like, very attractive aesthetic you know she's got the aesthetic for instagram down she's her paintings are positioned blah 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 but it's this is fake rothko fake rolex fake, fake mm-hmm. orgasm all same the same thing right that if you she's promoted like fuck you know she like she pays these pages you, you can go on to certain pages and send them like, a certain amount of money and they'll post your work repeatedly for mm-hmm. like a week or something i don't know exactly how it was i've never done it but then you know so you go on it and go oh, this is actually you know, stole this idea because this is yeah you know your first example of this is like last year whereas this first example this guy's first example of this is like five six years ago you know it's it's really easy to find out sometimes but the amount of folk that will just be like they'll take the hump if you like i go on the internet quite a lot and i accuse folk of plagiarism like i fucking love it like even, i want to do more of that man yeah it's, I, I think it should be called out i think it's like i i mean obviously there's like some people that are you know, they're, they're all, they're, it's not going to matter if some wee daft guy calls them a plagiarist, right? But the one that I, I take the pleasure the most in is, uh, and I honestly <laughs> like that. See Damien Hurst, right? Yeah. Damien Hurst, when you're like, when I was a kid and he was like pickling animals and all that, or whatever it is that he was doing, right? It kind of passed me by, right? Because I was like just that like, mad into football. As a kid, didn't care a bit much. Like, I was like, just football. Like, I just want to play football, and that's it. That's it. So art wasn't really on my radar that much. I had some uncles in my family that were talented painters and stuff, and I liked looking at their stuff when I yeah. went to the house and everything. But you know, it wasn't really like I wasn't like I need to go to, go into this. We'll go to the galleries and that. You know, it wasn't wasn't that way in when I was a kid. So when you hear about Damien Hurst as a kid, it was like oh, you just put a shark in a tank and cut it in half or a cow or whatever it was, and you're like brilliant. And then years later, it was like, once again to art, I still wasn't paying that much attention to him because he's, I've always felt, uh, it's just not my kind of thing, right? But then I was reading this old magazine one day and I had this full page of work that was already in bit created and then exact copies that were done by Damien Hurst like 20 years, 30 years later mm-hmm. kind of thing. Like side by side comparisons, a full page in a magazine and it's, it blew my mind, right? So I, any any opportunity that I've got on the internet if I see anyone mention Damien Hurst's name 
it just sends them to a frenzy. <laughs> like, yeah. a, like a really go for it. It's, it really pisses me off. And it's the best thing about it is it's the only time I can think that I've, if you go on the internet and say about anybody, you're always going to get someone going, oh, fuck you, man. Lads, yeah. You're wrong. That guy's brilliant. Or that person's brilliant. It's never harm with Damien Hurst. Mm -hmm. like, it's the one person that I can say would, like, the, I've, I must have done... Uh, maybe 20 videos probably dedicated to Damien Hurst and his, and his thievery and not once has someone got past one or two people have gone show me an example of how he's been a plagiarist like, yeah. and I've shown them and then they go oh right oh right no he definitely is you know it's, it's really funny like no one's got his back like, and I don't understand how you can be in the game that long even people that work for him like I know personally know some people that have worked for him and the like, he's the worst guy on the planet. Like he's the worst guy going, and I fucking love it. Like I, I really, <laughs> you know, because it, sometimes you feel bad. Like yeah, because you can't like everything. Like you just can't. You can't like everything. And the nature of, I think the nature of things sometimes. You know, if you're in the wrong kind of mood, and someone says, "Oh, what do you think about like yes. who, like Banksy?" Because mm -hmm. Banksy's in Glasgow, the new right, and you know, like most days I'll just well, he's a plagiarist as well. He's a plagiarist as well, so. He's probably a bad example, but um, I like the fact that Banksy copied that Blake Lara. Yeah. And yeah. then Mr. Brainwash said, I'm just going to copy Banksy. And then actually made a career out of Yeah. Just absolutely I, I'm just yeah. literally I'm copy that. everything. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> it's just that he's done it. Banksy yeah. did it. So why not? Everyone, unfortunately, at a certain level, everyone seems to do it. Like the copy. And if you're doing it, like, like Brainwash was it, I. Yeah. Like if you do it like that and you actually, you know, you admit you're doing it. Uh huh. Like, it's funny. Yeah, that's fucking hilarious. Like, I'd, you know, it'd be brilliant fun if I had the capacity to get my hands on a shark. Yeah, I'd be the thanks I could solve our Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what you mean. It's just, it's, it, it's, it's too hard to plagiarise Damien Hurst, I suppose, but it's easy for him because he's got the money. Yeah. yeah. So he can plagiarise other folk. Easy. What? Easy. What you were saying about, say, like, the attractor girl with Instagram following, mm -hmm. I was so happy when I saw you talking about that on TikTok because originality and creativity whether or not my photos are original or creative, I try to be. Yeah. But it pisses me off so much because there seems to be no shame now. There's absolutely zero shame in copying the exact same photo, the exact same painting, the exact same reel or video and everyone's using the same song. And yeah. the thing that annoys me the most now, I have, you know, like, I hate watching. I have to go in the comments and see how they respond to a compliment. Yeah. So there'll be something which I know is AI, like the cottage in Glencoe and they've got AI and there's star trails and it's the same photo everyone's taken. And there's like a sunbeam coming down that I recognise from an app. And someone will say, oh my God, I can't believe you captured it. And they're like, yeah, no, that's great. And I'm like, you fucking didn't. You're full of shit. Yeah. And they've got 200,000 followers that they probably bought off. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. God. Oh, it's, it busts you. It really busts you. It's so kind of humble enough. Yeah. Like, just to be like, Dude, there's, a, there's a painter, I'm not going to say who it is, right? And I don't mean that to sound arch, and I just don't want to get into it. But they, they posted a photo of... It was a photo, right? It was of them, I think. I can't remember exactly what was in the photo, but it was of them, and there was some sort of weird filter over it that made it look like it was splattered with paint. Mm -hmm. But it was very definitely a photo. Like, it was, there was no arguing about it. And uh, loads of folk, loads of folk in the comments were like, oh, I fucking nailed that. It's the greatest painting I've ever seen. Well done. <laughs> and the person, the painter, didn't, didn't correct it yeah we just now all the comments like, yeah. just jump in on at least one of them yeah. and just be like listen this this is a photo with a filter on it like it's definitely not a painting yeah but they didn't and you're like because they'd rather they'd rather have the kudos associated yeah. with something like that when they didn't do it it's ridiculous yeah it's no shame that no shame and that's what we have to deal with on the internet the, the art world is very definitely for folk at for folk at a certain level or below a certain level, you know, like myself, like I have to do all my art business on the internet. There's not, there's no other way for me to do it. than now it's, you know, ex, ex, exhibitions are, are good, but the, you know, the lost a lot of hassle for a very little reward in terms of, yeah. you know, financial reward. And that's ultimately, you know, all I need, all I want, all I want from my painting is to be able to afford my studio. That's, that's it. I just need to be able to keep my studio functioning. So I don't, you know, I don't need to, I don't need to go chasing after all these exhibitions to try to try my hardest to get my paintings on a wall because I can I know just now for the time being I can paint something, post it on Instagram, and often they'll sell because I keep my price super low as well because I've also got an issue with expensive art. <laughs> I 
But I just, you know, like, it's, I just find it's like, if you're not, if you're not kind of one of these big names that you can get into, you, you, get, you get taken on by a gallery or you've got representation or something, you know, you need to be online, but the, the, the online side is filled with, as we say, like fucking, you know, like real, real thieves and AI now as well. AI as well. And, you know, just like terrible takes as well. Like people that have got really terrible opinions on art or really kind of stupid, just stupid brains. Like people that have got like brains that don't work. Yeah. You know, it's, and, but they're getting away with, you know, they, they do get away with yeah. it to some degree. Is it like an expose the saviour talking about? And then like two people will go, yeah. <laughs> and then that's it. It's over. And I'm still raging and nothing's, yeah. nothing's been accomplished. <laughs> no, I like it. Well, yeah. just know that I'm sitting there like, yes. Appreciate yeah. it, man. Appreciate it. So wait, nice. see, just before we move on, mm. I know there's a lot of topics we could go on a tangent with, whether it's AI or uh, where can people buy your paintings? Predominantly Instagram. Instagram, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. uh, a post... I do try and post all my work on all social media, but I find that Instagram's the most painter-friendly mm-hmm. map. Like, you can put them all in like a seat. Well, in saying that, sometimes it's a bit of a pain in the ass with the actual size of the picture. Like, if you try and put 10 pictures up, you know, it's sometimes yeah, people it's zoomed into one. Is different crops. Different crop, you know, like, maybe, like, I don't understand how they haven't figured this out yet. It's been a problem forever. Yeah. And they seem to fix stuff all the time on these apps, but for some reason this ability to change the change the size of the picture in the, or, in the actual post that just doesn't it's, it's annoying but that's it seems the best place to sell out for me certainly like I, I don't get many sales uh, the, the other the other the other one i suppose I, I do post my work on tiktok now and i've had i've had a week, quite a bit of success i suppose but i usually just tell them to come through to my instagram and do business on instagram for some reason so um, so I Ferrero Rossi at Ferrero Rossi on Instagram at Ferrero Rossi and yeah. if you've got TikTok I suppose some of the videos are on Instagram as well but at Ferrero Rossi on TikTok loads of folk ask you questions and yeah. he gives you a take on things like Banksy uh, the guy that did the cow prints in there uh, <laughs> Damien Hurst but also positive ones like yeah. I think I asked you about an artist and the Iranian women Gosa Galtini I found out years ago and uh there was, I had an opportunity because there was a guy I used to work with, Steve, and he's right into his art. He does auctions for Glasgow Children's Hospital and stuff, so sold like a print and stuff there. But Gossa Gocini was there, and one of hers with like the skiers going down the white paint. Right, uh, it, was only, it was only a few hundred. And then I checked in by the time Steve next did an auction, it was a few thousand. I'm like, oh, I missed it. Man, that's, it happens so fast. Yeah. It happens so fast for folks. I, I, no wonder with that work, that, that, that stuff was really cool. Really like that. I really like that stuff. But that's the great thing about TikTok for me is that I learn. I learn quite a lot. I suppose. Why do you use TikTok as a a forum compared to any other? Because it's one that I don't interact with at all, and it's because I've got a sort of preconceived notion about the type of thing that's on it. It's although yours, you always got content is very different to what my yeah. Thing is. I mean, I I definitely when I first heard of TikTok, I, I was I was so I was so into Vine. That when yeah, yeah. I TikTok, I'm like, ah, wait, this pish, twelfth day nonsense like this, this isn't, this isn't gonna work. You need, it needs to be short and succinct, you know, like yeah. it needs to. But no, I, I've soon learned that. I mean, it's it's a heinous app. Yeah, like I will say that. Like it's, I'm on it a lot, but it's it's a real bad one, right? Because it's. I mean, it sucks your day. Like sometimes mm-hmm. you could there, you laugh, and we get ten minutes or just you know sitting up a cigarette and watching TikToks before you know it, you've been you sat there all day smoking and watching TikTok. But the it, 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 there's more there are, there's more to it than you know like kids dancing or whatever. It is, yeah, the, which is the sort of traditional stereotype of it. But um, I think I get into it because I think I think I just like the fact that you can do that. I mean that. Until very recently, every video that I'd, I've ever done is got a is a green screen with a mm-hmm. scrolling background. Like I'm not, I, I'm not in the business of like finding out what the app can do. I'm like, well, I found this one thing that is looks so bad and induces headaches, and I can talk about art and really punish people. And <laughs> people are like, you want to learn about this artist, you're going to have to put up with this fucking really spider eyes. Yeah, real eyes. So that, but then. 
so that for the last couple of years, all it was was the spinning green screen thing. But then recently, I found the filters. Yeah, which I only I start only started using because a couple of folk made a couple of comments that I, I, the audacity of them I couldn't believe. What um, in fact I mentioned it that day. So it was the, it all kicked off the filter thing, and my my anger kicked off something fierce with a uh, plagiarism story about a painter that stole that painted somebody's photograph. Well, right. a professional photographer who had a picture on the front cover of Harper's Bizarre Vietnam Edition. And this wee guy for Luxembourg painted the picture, entered that into competition, which had won monet- a, a financial reward. And then he was trying to sell it for six grand, right? So the pho- photographer got in touch going, just to let you know, because the guy's a young guy, right? Student, I think. So just just like, you know, the way you usually do things is you ask permission or you like yeah. the image or whatever, because this is an exact copy of my paint, my photograph. All you've done is flipped it. All fucking hell broke loose. Like this poor woman, this poor photographer, right? They just started getting on these matches, getting death threats and everything. Like, yeah. Full on, like people just raging at her for having the audacity to, to attack this boy for all he did was paint and apparently I mean, like, this is this is when it got wild the photo well, look all you did was take a photo he painted it that takes more that takes more ability and you're like well <laughs> not really like because like obviously like taking photographs you know you can like it, we all know how much it takes to to, to do that like to co- compose a shot get a model you know like, it's all, all hitting that thing obviously it's you know it's a lot of work but for some reason people think because you're clicking a button that that's all there is to it so then so i ended up i was so invested in this story because i'm like this wee guy ended up getting like it went to the court in luxembourg that's where he was from in the court in luxembourg um, it turns out that this kid's mum was in, involved in the local um judiciary is that how you say it like yeah kind of she was i think she's quite high up in the certainly in the community maybe not maybe not in any legal sense but she was obviously heavily involved in this but they 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 they, they ruled against the photographer in luxembourg where well, they said yeah. that the they said that the pose that the model was doing despite the fact that the model was entirely organized by the photographer how she was standing how her hair was how the how her clothes were and all these things were replicated in the painting with like the hair coming down over her eyes and the way that the shawl was on her and stuff he added like one or two things into the painting but he very definitely a terrible copy of a lovely photograph so um don't know how we got into that take i so this is the 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 point where i put my microphone on the producer's mic oh welcome and they, they say that um now I don't have any signal to verify this, fact check it, but I think photography derives from like Greek or something, meaning painting with light. Yeah, photo, photons, yeah. 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 Right. There you go. I guess graphics, like graffiti as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, it's it, they, get, they get, you just get shit on something fierce, photographers and that. I didn't realise it until quite recently, like when, when all this kicked off. So when I started using the filters, it was to respond to these stupid comments. Mm-hmm. You get a sign mm-hmm. check. Um, courtesy of Lee, it's drawing with light, not painting. Drawing with light, right? You know, mm-hmm. close enough. Huh? That's really interesting because a lot of people will always bring up the fact that, see, when you get into the AI argument, like, and you're like, AI is stupid, man. Like, it's, yeah. not, it's not art. That, well, that's what they said about photography, like, you know, in the 1800s or whatever, you know, they always said that. And you're like, I but like, you're still using, like, actual physical ability with, when you're doing photogra- photography. Yeah, Robert was just typing a few words into it and getting a few sing back for you. It's really weird because it, it, part of me doesn't want to be the, you know, I'm aware that I'm, you know, I'm 41. So in, in the internet, that's like, that's ancient, right? So if you start being like, oh man, fuck AI, you know, you're just going to get loads of younger folk going, I granddad, let's just, you know, get on with, you know, it's happening. This is happening. Yeah. You're just too old to understand it. And I think there maybe is a wee tiny element of me being... Not too old to understand it, because ultimately I'm only 41, but I am not that. I kind of stop. I got to a certain level with technology and I stop. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't, I've never owned a tablet. Not yet, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to soon, actually. I've made a 
I've made a decision to own a tablet, right? Which is bonkers. Like I, I've never, I've never owned one, but I want one because I've. Um, I'm actually going back to college. Going back to college next. Yeah. It just I just got my funding and all that. So, so as soon as I get my loan in, it's <laughs> buying a buying a tablet. I mean, it'll be useful probably for college. But I'll probably use it. But your probably. phone is just a tablet miniaturized. That's true. It's the same. Fact. I know, but what I really want, and I don't know if you've seen this right, is a uh, is is uh, I think it's called endless paper. I know what you mean. I've looked at this and look, I've could have thought that's a great idea. So when you zoom in, what whatever. It? Yeah. Yeah. So you cool. can just keep drawing. Yeah. And you like, zoom into like your eye, and then yeah. you know into another universe. See some of these on Instagram. Oh yeah, Lord man, I've been that's ridiculous. Not stop thinking about it for months, and yeah. like it's taken me. And sure. it's, you wouldn't be able to do it that. Way. You probably could get it on the phone, yeah. maybe, but it would take yeah, probably a different technology. So I want like a tablet with one of the yeah fancy pens. But I think what you're saying about the technology aspect of it is maybe not so much technology. It seems more like it's a protection of artistry and creativity. The argument against the AI, you mean? Yeah. Hey, oh. Or just or just technology as general. Or AI, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, the same arguments can be made of film versus digital. And of course, and they have been made. They have been made, yeah. and there's a place for both. Yeah, like, there's a huge sure. renaissance for for film at the moment. Yeah, of course, yeah. but it's taken. At the same time with film and digital, it's usually from the stance of ignorance that people did alter their film photos yeah. the same way that we do in Lightroom, dodging and burning and changing parts of it. So it's always happened. It's just yeah. at the face value, if you don't look into it, other than the surface, film photo, Aye. nothing's done, which can be true. But it's also got the film you choose has a certain colour grade. Whereas if you take the digital raw versus JPEG, raw is the raw ingredients it's going to be flat because it's capturing enough data it's not going to look nice mm -hmm. take a jpeg like on your phone it's going to give you your hdr it's going to process it right okay but it's usually just that argument from a stance of ignorance but i think with ai it's the same thing like it has its place but usually the people that are posting the ai art are annoying and like you say that they're, they're they're taking the credit as if they've, they've done this genius thing but they've all they've typed in is like make a thing in the style of this artist uh, but it's like a woman with, and it's raining yeah, I'm like yeah, we'll fill it this. Yeah, yeah, this is me. This is my art. Yeah, I mean, see for do you know you remember, you remember like, for, for for at least two or three weeks at the start, all this fucking madness that was literally folk gloating online. They were like, oh, this is going to, you know, say goodbye to your career artists. You know what I mean? This is yeah, you know, like, let's imagine gloating about that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like for something that's effectively like, you know, well, I'm pretty broke in real life, but I've got, I think I've got like, something like seven million dollars in the bank and, and grant that they've done online and it's <laughs> you know what i mean so it's kind of like me being like you know cutting about in a fancy car i've got loads of fancy cars and grant that they've online i don't drive in real life right but it's like me being like oh, yeah my po ah, yeah my post does that and my post looks just like that one yeah it's almost like the metaverse yeah die. Uh, yeah fucking metaverse jesus christ they're trying to make this shit they're they're so invest folk invested so much money in nfts the, so funny. Uh, it's so funny. Like it's the the um did you hear about the Seth Green the Seth Green thing? No. Seth Green the uh had it bought a he bought an ape. He bought one of the board apes what they were called, right? And someone stole it. Mm -hmm. How uh the technical side of it I'm not hundred percent frankly. Um <laughs> the technical aspect I'm not hundred percent sure about, right? Somebody broke into his wallet or whatever. Yeah and stole it right but he'd already created an entire tv show around this monkey around this ape right so all of a sudden he couldn't put his show out and it was imminent like it was all ready to go it had been made i believe and then um, all of a sudden because he didn't own this ape anymore because someone else owned it because they stole it they couldn't put a show out and I'm like imagine getting into that situation imagine like having to you know waking up one day and being like ah oh, man I can't put my TV show out because you know this digital ape that yeah. bought for a million dollars isn't mine anymore because some guy put another hat on it or something just put another fucking hat on it like change the colour of his t-shirt like there wasn't much variation in yeah. the Bold Date Yacht Club there really wasn't like even seen it like the Bold Date Yacht the yacht like yeah. but at least wait, so with NFTs right there are parts of it that I think were good. So, Board Ape Yacht Club had with it, if you owned it, you got invited to certain events. There's Lewis Hamilton and all that. You got special conditions. Whereas, but people didn't know that. So then other people brought out like 
haggis apes and like little Scottish ones and people were paying thousands thinking this is the next big thing yeah. but it's not Board Ape Yacht Club was an exclusive club we get your NFT receipt of this monkey but that was like your entrance into this exclusive club right. which is fine that yeah, makes it sense. right but the rest of the NFT thing was just pish and my favourite story is Logan Paul paid $650,000 for this like transformer looking one it's now worth like five grand yeah but he in terms of originality and creativity like prime energy juice they're just copying there's loads of energy just to be brought out and make a fake short supply and demand and yeah. just ripping off kids yeah absolutely he's an absolute yeah. parasite oh he really is the two of them I actually like because I think KSI gets a real easy ride yeah and he's one of the I think he's one of the worst cunts going <laughs> <laughs> I really do like there's there's something about him the two the two the two Jakes Sorry, is that the producers know that's the first day? Uh, it's the first two but, words. <laughs> is that right? Yeah. What an honor. A third day. Well, my goodness. Take, it's taken us a while to get there. If I had a reflection here, I'd text my mum. <laughs> <laughs> well, I uh, would never believe it. Um, the <laughs> so, uh, the two of them are, the two of them definitely are a pair of them, right? And the, 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 the Paul brothers or whatever, and they're, they're sort of anyone connected to that world, I suppose, are all are all wee dicks. But the there's something about there's something about Logan Paul and and KSI that just I there's something really sinister about the two of them. I think they're playing daft, they're playing silly, yeah, but they're smart and they're leeching off of ten year olds. Yeah, it's not an unintelligent business model to have. Because it's going to be there for better in perpetuity. It's nuts. It's crazy. But it's this yeah, something about um, it's so much crazy. Because even like so, our, the kids, we, um, the step, my step kids are like, they showed a very brief but quite intense desire for it. Like there was, it was, it lasted a couple of days. Mm -hmm. They were just like, oh, you look at this ball of pride when we're in the supermarket. Can we get that? And you're like, no. Nah. Yeah. Hey. You know, like, we'll just get something else, get a fruit juice or something. It's, <laughs> it's not full of shit. Not promoted by a guy that got famous for I think was it not was the Logan Paul and Jake Paul not the the guy that used to like hump the sofa and that on Vine was that not them no idea I don't know I don't know they were the hump the folk that used to hump stuff so that, that makes me kind of like them <laughs> you know what there was a lot of humping stuff on Vine like there was the yeah. my lasting memory of Vine is the, uh, too many videos of guys humping things sofas. It seemed to be a Why's that thing on Vine. I don't know. That's your, that's your algorithm. Really? It's listening. I know. I'm like, any videos of guys humping, <laughs> humping sofas? Any posh white American boys? Next post, the next post that no, don't hump the sofas. Yeah, don't hump the sofas. On. <laughs> or, or do if you want to become super successful. Yeah. Because it, it definitely works for them. I know that one of them was on Disney. I suppose that that's always going to help. But I mean, with part of me is part of me is always going to be like with anyone. That isn't like a really sinister person, but most folk are going to be like, fair play, like, you know what, like, you're, the, the, you know, one of them's now in the wrestling, you know, like, I don't need to bring up wrestling out of you. Yeah, it's not, it's like, it's like, like, yeah. over, like, as soon as the word came out, <laughs> but, and, you know, like, I always, I, I'm, I always want to be super positive, I've, I've always been a positive person, I've, I'm mostly, mostly a positive person, and then, um, something about them, I'm just like, no, fuck them, you know, like, I don't, I'm not happy for the success, you know, like, fuck those guys. Like, I hope that, I hope that someone that can actually fight, finally fights the one that's the boxer, as a JK. I hope that he actually finally fights an actual boxer and someone takes his head clean off his shoulders. Yeah. That, they've that got so much money, man. though. They've got boxing in their back garden. Exactly. I go through phases, like, I, I used to hate them. And now I'm just indifferent. I'm just like, it's for kids. Yeah, that's true. They're just making an arse themselves to make money and yeah. get views and they'll say anything and do anything yeah that's true I mean it's a, it, it, it happened before like there's a, there's a famous story where Vince McMahon kind of I think he got it from Japan but he, he kind of started this whole business of being the most obnoxious prick ever in the radio to promote fights mm -hmm. and Muhammad Ali heard a local radio station so that's why he did that all from like Vince McMahon is that right? and then it's just kind of spiraled from there so now you can't be in UFC like they'll let you go like Colby Cummington he's a UFC fan dead humble dead nice he was going to get sacked he started being a pro-Trump arsehole and now everyone hates him and now he's got a mega contract, he's getting title fights, he's getting all this. But That's it's, what it is, isn't it? It's people just like, cool, yeah. yeah it's you can't just be middle of the road and be a heel. decent yeah. person. Yeah, yeah. Like, until you start using this C word a bit more, like your, yeah. your Sano, 
Do you won't get the traction you need. I actually just found out recently from watching TikTok that I started to notice people hoarding back certain words and not even like the big the big ones. Like Un- unalive. Unalived or caught like even saying corn instead of pawn if they're talking about that or if they're talking about yeah, like suicide being unalived or death being unalived, yeah. whatever. Like, it's 1984, I stuck, man. I heard someone the other day changing the word gun to something. I think they said goon. 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 Is this because those keyboards all get taken down? Aye. Like, yeah. it turns out, and I'm like, well, that, well that's my problem. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's not, you know, it's not that the videos aren't great. It's the fact that I'm too, I'm, I swear too much and TikTok don't like it. But yeah. I, I only just realised that. Like, it's, yeah. it's very sure true. Um, TikTok is not true. They, they demonetise it. If you swear or you say kill or something in the first 20 seconds, they will demonetise you. So now... Folk are, folk are either pandering or leaving. Uh, and Joe, I think Joe Rogan was one of the first ones to go like, nah, I'm out. Right. As that you was a slash. Like, you're so right wing. Whereas, he's not, he gets everyone on. Like, he doesn't know what he is. Yeah. I think with Joe Rogan, I think that's the thing. Um, he's, he's so open to, he's so open to everyone else's ideas. I yeah. Guess. He's a sponge. Um, he's a sponge. I, I, I used to watch, I used to watch his stuff quite a lot. There was a couple of folk he got on that I couldn't, I couldn't get on board with, but, mm-hmm. but that's the, that's always going to be the case where, when someone does something for that long, you know, some of the guests I'm going to be for you. Yes, so there's now 2,000 episodes in, just the other day. Yeah. Wow. So we've got, we've got a catching up to that. Yeah, 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 I've got a, a few to go. See, when you started the TikTok thing, was there something that, obviously, there must have been something that sort of incited uh, these sort of monologues about art and the deconstruction of fraud, fraudulent activity or... I think what was the first one? The first, well, the first few videos I posted were time lapse, and I think that's why I got it. I wanted to do paintings. I wanted to paint and do time lapse paintings. Right. Yeah. So, um, I think the first three maybe were the time lapse paintings. Then one day, I, I I can't remember why I decided to do it, um, but I remember sending this video to my wife. Um, it was of. So the original joke on TikTok was. This is my favourite painting of all time, but it's also the greatest painting of all time, and I'll tell you why. So, it started off with one of my favourite paintings of all time. It quickly, uh, over the course of doing that series of videos, it... Uh, oh, did you see that bit loads? I, I was going to ask about the big apple. I was like, yeah, no, no, I, I said that about... I said that about paintings that I hate. <laughs> I could say I watched in show last night. And <laughs> I still managed to pull this down to make it sound like an art review, but the the big apple was the, the listening room Yeah, you know, uh, Magritte. Is one of my, that is one of my favourite paintings of all time, and it is one of the greatest paintings of all times. It's so ludicrous, like it's mm-hmm. like folk, and this is the one thing that I've found from from doing TikTok, and it has been has been a real source of uh, comfort, I suppose, is that a lot of people have commented me, to me saying that they you know they appreciate the fact that I find the a lot of humour in art, mm-hmm. and that's how I talk about art. Well, I don't find it. You know, I don't find art particularly moving, like paintings and stuff. Like I've never stood, like there's some older ones that I've stood in front of and I'm moved by the fact that I'm standing in painting distance to a painting. But it's not yeah. necessarily the subject. It's the fact that if you stand in front of a Vincent and you're like, motherfucker stood in front of this thing doing that, you know, it's like that. And that excites me about going to see actual paintings. But more often than not, my favourite paintings all tend to be ones that I find incredibly humorous whether or not they're meant to be like so there's like the probably the greatest thing that's ever been painted by anybody is the garden of earthly delights by Hieronymus Bosch and in my opinion right this thing's ludicrous like it's 600 years old or something and it's could have been painted uh, you know recently like it's uh, it, it defies belief to see it. it there's a modernism to it there's like surrealism. Yeah. Six hundred years before anyone thought to be surreal in paintings. It's it's really bonkers. But one of the things that really drew me to it is there's a character there's three panels, it's a triptych, and there's like um heaven on one panel, the garden earthly delights in the middle, which is effectively like I suppose meant to be like us mm-hmm. having doing all our sinning and stuff and enjoying life. And then there's the watching corn. Watching corn, yeah. <laughs> no one's taking us off the no. <laughs> uh, no, no one's demonetizing this one. Mother Parker tunts. Um the <laughs> sorry, that was that was cheap. Um yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Um so there's a guy at the bottom of this 
third panel, which is the hell panel, and he's being squashed by, I think it's a giant mandolin, and under it, he's under it, right, and he's naked, and across the cheeks of his arse, there's sheet music. Okay. There's music written on his arse, right, and somebody not that long ago thought, well, I'll transcribe that music and we'll play it, so you can go on YouTube and hear it. It's called The 600-Year-Old Butt Song From Hell, and that's how... Cool. That's how I paid, started paying attention to the Garden Earth of the Lights and it very quickly became my favourite painting. But there's so many brilliant old things with really ludicrously funny things in it, like the Tower of Babel by um, Bruegel, I think, one of the Bruegels. Um, it's got a guy shitting in a stream, like, tiny. Yeah. <laughs> tiny, you could hardly see it. You have to, it has to be pointed out, but there's a guy in that painting shitting in a stream. Oh, I and you're like, it probably was. It was probably the thing that folk did. It probably wasn't meant to be funny, but yeah. but that's funny. <laughs> it's like it's like a religious painting. It's a painting of a thing that ha- I think it's a biblical thing, the Tower of Babel. And there's somebody shitting in a stream, and I, I find that you've got a nice view of the river there. You've probably seen that. Yeah, I've seen many things. That are, yeah. yeah. So with these little hidden details, does that inspire your painting? Like, have you got any with like little tiny details? Like, Hundred percent. Yeah, you've got hidden in. Very, very, very seldom. Prior to certainly when I was doing acrylic painting, and any acrylic painting I did about any landscape, any seascape, anything that had clouds in it, in those clouds, there's 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 decks. Okay. There's decks hidden in paintings. I've hidden a lot of decks in paintings. <laughs> And some of them aren't even that well hidden, but you don't really notice them. So I uh, definitely, I, 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 I feel, I feel like you have to sometimes. Yeah. If you're painting something, and you get the chance to make it funny, you know, even if it's a wee hidden detail, it, 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 music. Then it, it inspires people a little bit. If they know there might be something to so actually look at it more just a properly state at glance. Maybe they aren't there. Maybe I'm just talking shit to get them to look at my paintings better. Red ball of rose. But who knows? <laughs> Some of them are definitely good dicks, so. <laughs> photographer, I know that if the client's been an arsehole or being weird with the payment, he will, like, Photoshop just a tiny wee dick in one point. Of it, just for his own, like, it's I, I, and I think you have to, as, a, as in, any, in, in any art, I think, if you're, well, some folk are very serious about the art and they kind of take that away from them. But from my point of view, as somebody who fails, constantly to take stuff seriously like the life reality itself uh, just doesn't lend itself to be taken seriously i've never yeah. I've, I've always struggled with it and um i, I just feel that if you get the chance to put something that'll amuse you into a painting or amuse someone else i, I just find i find humor and art that my kind of main thing like it's something that i look for when i'm looking at artists mm-hmm. and it's something that i, I like to do in my own, my own paintings some i mean it's not always but you know, even though if I'm thinking about, I've done, a, I've got a post-it note paint sitting on my easel just now in the studio, waiting for the paint to dry. And uh, you know, I'm going to put something on the post-it note, but there's, I don't think I've ever done one way in it and remotely serious on it. You know, it's don't not, hum couches. What's that? Don't hum couches. Don't hum couches. I, um, you know, it's always been something goofy. You know, like because it's, well, there's plenty of serious art out there. Yeah. Plenty of highbrow things. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, don't, I can't be fucked with. So. Yeah, no, I like that though. I like that attitude. And the the people that you call out on TikTok and stuff, it's never undue. No. But I like being like a like a, a debaser. You know, like the picture you saw was yeah, like yeah. bringing folk, yeah. attention folk, putting themselves on a pedestal and bringing yeah, yeah, yeah. big. That's so cute. I don't know if ridiculous is the cutest wee guy. Um, is that an hour? Uh, it hasn't felt like it, but that's actually one hour and six. Oh, jeez. Can I sh- do the. Viewer questions, yeah. Okay. I like, so, you know who I guess is Yeah, I'll say I'll say right. I, I can say after you answer or blah, probably best <laughs> let me see if I can figure it out. Okay. <laughs> so one I don't think you'll figure out, it's uh why is your sister so awesome? You know what? I I, I Angie texted me earlier <laughs> and told me that she'd ask the question. What is it? I and I I, I I thought that's what it would be. I actually <laughs> almost called it. I almost called it. It's it's hard to know. It's a hard que- it's hard to know why she's so awesome. Yeah. But, she, but she is. Bless her. She also said that her partner was better and she like influenced you and stuff like that. Yeah, of course. I, <laughs> or whatever whatever you whatever you think. Is she younger or whatever? Whatever. She's older. <laughs> if I had to look at the camera and say that older. <laughs> <laughs> Only by like what? 
18 months or something. Right, okay. So, well, very close in age, very close, very close. We, 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 all, we weren't always when we were kids, we, we hated each other, I think. Certainly, there was violence. I think that goes for a lot of siblings at that kind of at a certain age, isn't it? Yeah. All of a sudden you're like, you're actually, you're not right. Yeah, you're a half decent person. I'll speak to you. Yeah, I'll talk to you now. Yeah. Yeah. It probably helped that we worked together. We, we both we grew up in a family business. So, we, you know, we worked together a lot. And then and once you had a certain age, your staff nights out, you're always together and stuff. So, um, so I, the, she can, she, you know, I'll give her all that. She can't even make a better pizza than me, though. And, I'm, <laughs> and I know that I'll piss her off. <laughs> Is your whole family creative? You said like your mum and paints or something, right? My mum, my mum did a few painting lessons, uh, and the stuff that she ended up doing was was great. It definitely, she's definitely got the knack for it, but she's not got the time for it because she's the busiest wee woman in right. Ayrshire. So, um, she always up, she's always doing something. But, um, but they've got it in the. My mum's side of the family I had a couple of great uncles, like my nana's brothers. They were all, a couple of them were oil painters and sculptors and stuff like yes. that. So. I've always been around it, I guess. Sculpting's good. Oh, I'm dying to try it, but yeah. how do you get into it? <laughs> well, what do you buy? Well, I've got, I've already got paintbrushes out coming out my ears. I mean, yeah. buy chisels and stuff yeah. and hammers, but one day maybe get a bit of wood and stir. I will let us, I'll just go and get a tree for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's been, me, my girlfriend and I did a course on play spoon making oh, a right. number of years ago, and that's, it was, Sculpting in a sense because you start with a block of wood and you yeah. just reduce it to a shape. Yeah. Um. So not not particularly difficult if once you get past the initial aye. Uh, cuts and yeah, was it lost the fingers? Ah, yeah. So you're using the band, the saws and all the, all the electric shit and stuff. No, or you just all, all hand tools, all hand tools, and it's quite a nice thing to be able to do. It's just take a, a stick of wood. But well, no, I actually start. I've got lots of things. <laughs> Because yeah. all right then, <laughs> <laughs> bicycle pants, loads of spoons in his drawer. It's just it was well, it was quite useful to be able to. It makes a nice gift. Aye, of course. Aye. Like big wooden like salad servers, oh. and, or then if you've got like a, I've got a famous flask, and nothing, nothing, I couldn't get my mince and rice into it. <laughs> so I made a spoon that fits nicely into it. It's just like it's a problem that really didn't exist, which was easily solved. <laughs> Absolutely magic. Sorry, we'll come one more questions to have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we've got another question. Can anyone paint? Is it teachable? Yes. Yeah. Anyone can paint. I've got can it. anyone paint well? Yes. Yeah, I think so. I, I think it's it's not like, like there's certain arts that you have to have kind of almost like natural ability. Like, you know, the dancing, I guess. I've always, I've, I've always a bit funny before and then I've, I'm a, so <laughs> dancing as an art, like it is definitely, and dancing and singing in a, like properly singing, I suppose, like, you, you know, it's, it's harder to learn stuff like that, but with painting, the, the scope is so wide that you could be like, you know, there's loads of ways to be a painter, you could literally just, you know, throw paint about, call it abstract and, and, and people do this, seriously, yeah. yeah, and then it's fair enough, but the, I've got a technique that I, I do offer to teach people right for a very the very reasonable price of sixty pounds for um, an undisclosed amount of time. Actually, I've never I've, I've never I'll never do it if I've got something to do later because the nature of the way I am, as you maybe noticed, I just I like to talk for ages. I was going to say this doesn't feel like we've I've not even covered half the stuff. I was going to no, it's so annoying. Well, yeah, a bit part too. Yeah, yeah, but the I I I've got a technique that I learned from the internet. Uh -huh. from a guy, uh, he didn't personally teach me it, I watched his videos and learned how to do it, mm -hmm. and it's bonkers, like it's so easy, and I've done it, I've done a couple of lessons, I, t I did my first lesson, I, I've got my wife in, and, and uh, I got her to paint, and she's never painted before, and she came away with, it's a, it's a landscape technique, it's oil paint based, and it's wild, like it, see in fact, it's in part of the yeah, so see the, the last, um, po post that note painting that I put up. I don't know if you saw that. With the kind of leading river. Oh, I'm good. I haven't got internet just now. So, aye. So the, we'll, we'll put a link up in the. Yeah, so the landscape behind the post that note, and it's the landscape took like 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, I've ever seen that. Painting. Yeah. Post that note took like three days or something, and then three weeks to figure out what to put on it. But 
the landscape is one that I did in one of my lessons to show the folk how to do it, and it's fucking stupidly easy, man. You just you, you it's you have to do it on wood. It only works on wood, or it works best on wood. Don't tell them. Yeah, here's how you do it <laughs> for free. But no, but if you want to find out, yeah, I'll be up to that, man. Get in touch. Get in touch. Come sixty quid. We give you a sandwich. You do a. Uh, do you do like groups or is it one to one? Uh, the my, I did it with my wife, one to one, and then I had a couple of ladies come in one day and we did two to one. So it was there oh. was mother and daughter kind of thing, and it was it was great fun. They had a blast. They drank they drank a lot of wine. <laughs> so there's wine involved if, if, well, they, if yeah. desired. So just to loosen them up a bit because they were people are quite people think that it's really you know you, it's really difficult and some of it is really difficult like some of the things some painting is is too difficult i've, I've found myself crying in front of a canvas before because mm -hmm. i can't do something like and it needs to be done that that's why i don't do commissions anymore coincidentally like i used to i used to be like i'll do a commission and someone asked me to do one that i really struggled with and i'm literally on the phone like tearing up to my wife being like i can't do this i've already taken the money i've already done most of the painting and there's this one aspect that i can't i can't do it's too fucking hard yeah and you've worked so hard to build up to a stage where people are asking you yeah and then you can't deliver then you can't sort of it but, uh, but i've managed to one way or another got it managed to get it done but the <laughs> it, it, things are it's, it's tricky but there's a lot of painting well the way i learned to paint as i said earlier is i just started painting very basic landscapes well literally sky maybe a hill some grass finding techniques to do it like mm -hmm. learning absolutely any way to do anything but now this as i say this technique of course more about removing paint with tissue than it is putting paint on with a brush you know okay, it's I mean, that does it really is it's nuts man it, that was from laura keenan thanks laura keenan that's a lovely question come for the lesson and uh, <laughs> the last one is the one where my girlfriend and Amanda's trying to throw me under the bus because hey. I, I like what it, <laughs> I've liked a few of your, your paintings, especially the post-it ones, but the I liked the Bobby one. I thought it was like just funny and cheeky. Right. And I was thinking of like where it put it. I don't know if it's called the Bobby one officially. Yeah, it is now. The Bobby one. And I, I, was, I was like, where could I put that? And she's like, oh, maybe at home. And I was like, oh, what about, you know, like downstairs bathroom? Because mm. I spend a lot of time in there. I'm going to be looking at it. So she wanted to ask, do you think art belongs in a bathroom? And I was like, that's, that might offend her. Like, what's that? Like definitely that? doesn't offend me. I definitely think that I... Yeah, but I mean, you spent people spend a lot of time in the bathroom. Yeah, the only thing that I'd say is it'd be a concern about putting things in the bathroom is if you get like a particularly steamy shimmer, it could damage. Oh, it's a shimmer. Not a downstairs, it's just a downstairs toilet. Then it's a hundred percent. I like it's. I've actually just sold. I did a. I did a painting um, not long ago. Uh, for a, a very dear friend, I didn't do it for him. I did a painting, and a friend of mine got in touch. With this mad bastard called uh, Scott. Brad, Scott Bradley, and he's um, he's a great guy. He's a merch guy, and he bought this mad stupid paint. It's a it's a naked self portrait that I did myself with okay. the words. You can only pish with the cock you've got. Yeah, written over the top of the, written over the top of the painting, and he got in touch. In fact, it was you. I, I actually put you can only piss with the cock you got. To be you know more accessible internationally. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and he. Uh, my, this, my pal Scott got in touch and he's like, I want to buy that, but I'll only buy it if you change it to pish. And okay. he was like, I don't want to insult you. Uh, if it's finished, it's finished. You don't have to do it. But <laughs> come on, we all we all want to, but you can't take anything. <laughs> Damn, you have to compose yourself, wee man. Jesus. Um, so I changed it. I changed it for him. I scored out one of the S's and put an H. Right. And uh, he was he's not picked it up yet because he the last he's he's a very busy guy touring, but. The last time he was meant to come pick it up, he ended up getting some mad tooth issue, and he couldn't he couldn't leave the house. So, um, I've still got it, but it's for, uh, you know it's a belter. I can't remember why I brought that up, but uh, oh sorry, that's why because he's um, he sent me a photo of where it's going to go, and it's in his downstairs bathroom. Right, okay. So it's a, a just perfect location for that. Exactly. It's just <laughs> weird. I think it's weird for him to buy it, but I love it. I think it'd be weird for anyone to buy it because it's because it's, <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> but really. It's a good painting, so. Yeah, so I is uh, bathrooms are a great place for paintings. Sweet. Spend a lot of time in there. So there you go, Amanda. There you go, Amanda. Yep, buy it. <laughs> yeah. It's available. <laughs> £100. So, uh, just, I don't know if you I had two quick questions I want to chat about for photos, if you can. 
Of course, it doesn't. That often got to so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what's your opinion on Edward Hopper? Edward Hopper. I like you know that I've got the Phillies one where it's the folks sitting in the light and it's based around the time when it was like lights out in the water, and uh, all his patents have like a theme of there's like a couple sitting next to each other and at first glance it looks like there's a loving couple but actually right. he's looking away smoking a fag, he's looking down at a paper like, and there's a few patents like at the beach there's a couple but right. they all hate this full of misery but all, at first glance it looks beautiful. That rings a bell. I actually I can't can't quite picture it though. I've heard, I know the name, but... It's like a corner glass building and folk are sitting in this cafe. Oh, like, they're like... Night, night, night Hawks. Hawks. Night Hawks, yeah. Ah, is that right? Of course, Edward Hopper. I, I mean, I, I love that. I love that series of paintings. There is a few of them. Yeah, there's a few. There's yeah. a few. Um, I think it's, I mean, to do anything that becomes that iconic, I think is, you know, is a wonderful, a wonderful yeah. legacy to leave because it's been hugely parodied, that, that paint yeah. or those paintings. I actually seen seen randomly the weird that you bring it up because the other day I saw a TikTok video uh-huh. of somebody that had they thought they'd found the, where the cafe was and the, the, they had a photograph okay or a, the, a print out of the picture up against where they thought it was and it did seem to fit I don't know if it's meant to be like if the, the, no one knows where it is I don't know if it is a a mystery but or if this person just you know, it was a mystery to them, and then they found it. I don't know, but I think I think it was meant to be in. I mean, I'll I'll get called out if it's wrong. I think it was meant to be in New York. I read right. the kind of lights out. Maybe right, okay. you're going to get bombed, kind of time and or like. Yeah, I, I didn't know that. I didn't um, know that, but I do know the painting. Yeah, and I do love it. It's a cool story. Ah, yeah, absolutely. I um, yeah, that was that question. Thank you. I <laughs> appreciate that. Learned something new. In terms of like creating anything, mm-hmm. do you have times of day mood? Like rituals or routines surrounding these things that get you to a place where you are your best? It's a great question. It's a great question. Daytime. Always daytime. Right. Can't paint at night. No. Can't paint at night. No. Oh, it's it's not, you meant to do with light. Like, that's what it would immediately if you think. But I just like to. There's certain things I like to do at night. That will involve painting. <laughs> painting. Like, I'd involve painting. If I ever got to the point where I'm like. You know, I sell enough paintings to be able to go full time. I still would fin- I'd still finish at five o'clock. Yeah, I just like to get done. But it doesn't help that in the winter, my studio is. I mean, it's it's a it's a great space, but it's it's cold. Mm. It's cold in the winter, a lot of broken windows, and it's on Old Bridge Street, which can be a bit sketchy come come night time. So, I tend to stay away from the studio but even at that time and I but even when I first started painting in my rooms and stuff never never worked, worked much past five or six o'clock even if I had a, a, a you know like a beer in my bonnet or something I'd still um, you know I'd still finish and start get up the next day and start again so in terms of in terms of you know rituals or stuff I'm not I'm not a particularly superstitious person but there are um, there are things like I wouldn't you know, I won't listen to new music if I'm if I'm painting unless I'm doing a very specific style of painting or type. New music, or yeah, music that's new to you. Music that's new to me. Sorry, I I need music to be super familiar. If I'm, if you don't want it to be. You know, want it. Can distract me. It's like I listen to the same set of podcasts every night when I'm going to sleep. But it's it's the equivalent. It's the equivalent of silence. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Until you get a funny bit, and then. There was a thing where we were camping on Mull and uh, we'd gone to bed after like being out taking photos and stuff and nothing. Like, you could hear me like, <laughs> we're yeah. about 10, anything, myself. Anything you can listen to the podcast, <laughs> tracking up. Yeah. Amazing. Um, but for the most part, those are like silent. So I, I get what you mean with that. It's, right. it's something that requires no concentration. Yeah. But it takes your head away from thinking about extraneous things in detail. Yeah. yeah. It's, I will listen to stuff that I've been recommended if I'm messing about, if I'm... Starting new... Yeah, if I'm... Styles and projects. Yeah, if I just, like, throw a canvas up on the wall or something and start fucking about, because I tend to do that a lot if I'm... Most of my canvases are on stretched onto wood, but sometimes I'll just throw one onto a wall and see what happens. Right. And uh, I only started doing that on my last exhibition. Uh, well, yeah, do you want some... You want, you want in on this? Is that what's happening? Franco, where does your creative inspiration come yeah. from? What you got to say about it? What you got to say about it? 
He doesn't have much to say. Shall we segue into the... Oh, well, no, Frank, was Frank, was, Frank was in the theme. Yeah. So uh, while we're getting the photos out, if you, do you want to start with yours? Can do, yeah. Um, I was just going to ask while we're getting this set up, mm-hmm. we spoke briefly. One of my, for nostalgic reasons, because I was working at the farm park at the time, one of my favourite albums was Duke Pandemonium, Marmaduke Duke. A great album. And you were saying that you had some form of involvement in the song Demon? I did have some form of involvement in the song Demon. It's one of my, one of my, uh, what would you call it? A real, a real um, jewel in my crown. Yeah. <laughs> The, I was very fortunate that I spent the first the, the two Marmaduke Duke albums I spent a lot of time in the studio when with the boys when they were making it and um, Demon was one that wasn't necessarily starting out as a Marmaduke thing it was just a drunk Saturday night thing okay. um, writing a song about the old day 77 might even have been that they were trying to write an album about the old day 77 but they definitely wrote a song about it and it became Demon it became a Duke song, but we all, so I, it was myself at that point, myself, Dragon and Simon in the studio. And uh, then our other friend, Mike, came later on. They'd already, they'd already done most of the music, or they'd done most of the music. I wrote some lyrics for it, which Simon sings. Um, it's about a wee house. That little red house. A little red house. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, so I, but that's when it hits into the yeah, actual yeah. chords. The actual lovely yeah, chords. Exactly. So the... The bit before that, when my pal Mike singing it was, he hadn't heard the song. We, okay. He came in from work. We were all sitting, smoking and drinking, and we'll let Mike sing to, write some lyrics and sing them to this click. He sang it to a click track, which was very brave of us. <laughs> and it worked out great, but the, I didn't want to sing my bits. I wanted, I wanted uh, Simon to sing my bits. So what, what bits did he sing to the click track? Is it the old baby? The baby. Bit? Oh, baby. Yeah, the, the, something about hometown. Something. It's been so long since I felt your vibrations and all that. Something like that. Uh, yeah, so he sang all that to a click he had. Nice, right. All right. And then I wrote the lyrics, The Little Red House, because there's a wee red, there's a little red house on the old day 77 on a corner that I figured out that if you started, if you started rolling a joint, in the car at that little red house as you're passing it you'd have it rolled smoked and done by the time you got to king touch okay and that was the whole point of that that sure. part of that song so it was the when it came out as a duke song i was buzzing yeah because the first one of the first duke gigs one of the first ones no it couldn't have been one of the first ones because it was the second album um but the pandemonium tour which i which i wasn't on by the way i'd like to point out i don't I mean, <laughs> didn't get invited to the duke, to the for some reason um, the I, I don't I don't hold it against it. <laughs> uh, the the that those lyrics get sang by two guest vocalists, which were Mike Bennett and John Lee Martin. Who John Lee Martin was in an incredible band. Well, he's been in a series of incredible bands. Uh, two of the most prominent ones, I guess, would be then Thickens and Kong. All right, which okay. are, Kong was just madness, like absolute fucking chaos, and a. Uh, Mike was obviously in, he was in very, he was in Ocean Size, and now he's a live guitarist in Biffy. Okay. So, the, him and John Lee singing those lyrics. I was yeah, actually spilling right. the gig, but I'm like, this is. Yeah. Demon, Demon was one of those songs, like, I love the album, but Demon just stood out to me. There was something to it. You knew, you knew there was like. Sinister. Like, it's a sinister it. song. It's a weird, it's a weird song. Yeah. <laughs> it's the weirdest song on the album, certainly. Just funny because the single was. Rubber Lover, but Rubber Lover and every other song is like Skin the Motherfucker. Last Skin the Motherfucker Live's a great song. It's yeah. also quite terrifying. Yeah, this is where your producer jumps in and says, See Rubber Lover and to skin the mofo. It's just. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. the last chorus is Rubber Lover's like, Duh. and then it kind of goes yeah. into it, right? Yeah, that's skin the bad bugger. And then it is like, that freaked me out. Oh man, what a vibe! Cool. Oh, it was Sorry. such a good time. Like I actually see, I just done a last note about the Duke. I, I still can. Me and Dragon, JP Reed, uh, my very dear friend, we he was mixing the first album, mm-hmm. the Magnificent Duke, and I was with him one night when he was mixing the so the 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 bass music, whatever you want to call it. The so it's like split into three sort like there's acoustic heavy rock and sort of bass or drum and bass so I guess it maybe not drum and bass drums and bass okay <laughs> I can't 
I, I threw up. Like, it actually made me whitey. Like, I, I haven't ever been able to listen to that album in its entirety since it got released because the night we were mixing it, there was just this constant kind of horrible, dirty, low bass frequency in the studio and we're sitting there at, the, at that point still smoking hash right in a you know we hadn't, we hadn't upgraded to weed by this point so it's like the brown note there yeah, like that. effectively like that and i'm like i'm like sitting i'm sitting just like bro i'm gonna be sick like i'm actually gonna be sick like and he's like nah no no nah, i'm actually gonna be sick. i fucking went like, ran down to the toilet and fucking threw up everywhere man mm-hmm. i'm like went back upstairs and like, switched that shit off put fucking i don't know what we put on i was worried about can you put art in the bathroom when you were sitting waiting over a guy's album? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so at least maybe for but that. But to be fair, like that, I think that actually drove Dragon a wee bit. He was like, oh man, if it fucking make you, makes you throw up, I we've got, we're onto something. <laughs> yeah, we've got like a hit, man, if it's making folk throw up. <laughs> yeah. But thank you for indulging me. No, my pleasure. I'll always talk about the joke. Class. I fucking love it. Folks, what's that? Exciting, you ready, Frank? Franco's uh, out of the show. Well, we, we start with Franco. <laughs> um, amazing. Um, okay, so what we'll do is we'll have uh, two sets. There's a set from me and a set from me, set from Daryl. And we're... <laughs> for <laughs> Don't believe them. Appreciate. They're, so, they're, they're somewhat different. So oh, well, we had to start off with Franco because we've never had a, a a double act before. That's it. All right. Double act for C bomb. Yeah, this has been a, a big night. <laughs> oh man, it's a great. Point. And it was one of the few photos I had of him that actually came out and he was right. in focus. Yeah, wasn't moving around or look at those ears. Yeah, and the ears were just nice and yeah. Kind of Plant to use the word erect. That was him wrong with them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, erect. Frost day. <laughs> Up in the wind. Yeah. And then there was like, so sort of a pride and joy. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. Or a Lion King-esque moment. Yeah, but that's <laughs> the first thing that popped into my head, actually, was like the Lion King. Look, again, those ears. Yeah. Unreal. And there's, you've got a great expression. Yeah, I, yeah. There's obviously a lot of love for oh, absolutely. little Franco yeah. in there. Yeah. Come on. I thought I was playing a guitar for a second then. Yeah. Sitting busking. I like I like the framing of this. Yeah. And there was a couple and this was the one that Franco's head sat somewhat square yeah, to that bit because it's quite a I want to say structured. It's, it's quite structured in terms of the geometricness of yeah, it. Yeah, I like it. We should have a lot. And then there was this. And it's That's not a great one. It's it's all well it's almost a good one. There's a lot going on in the background, which I think sort of detracts from the subject matter. Right, okay. Um, or at least it does for me. Right, fair enough. I, I like, like it. Um, making of the poster today. Yeah. I was taking you a shot. I was taking the dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Amazing. Nah, that's great. I love that, the way I'm coming into it. I, I like the fact face. your head's part of it. Well, I see your face. Yeah. And then we're, we're now into more standard. Yeah. Portrait photography. Um, so it's a wee sequence of these, and I was in two minds to what to do as, as a terms of a, like a color grade for this, mm-hmm. where to really push the fact that it'd be a crap morning, and then we'd got some nice blue skies, and it was quite bright, and uh, there was a lot of color. So I've mm-hmm. kind of went with a couple of color grades throughout this. So these are sort of more, um, slightly more bleached out, and I feel like that. that it helps not detract from you as a subject matter the fact there's ma- these massive open blue skies yeah. we get the hello with my dad Follow some. the texture of the beard and yeah it was Russian <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's the most insulting thing you could have said tonight or How's that not from... just with the uh, recent events oh right, yeah <laughs> just, just, yeah, like, um, like, yeah but you've been like Bad, movie bad guy Russian yeah. you're saying ah yeah fair not that, that one not that one no. now you've got a, oh. a more friendly yeah. expression you look Welsh different <laughs> <laughs> and so then the colours just demanded that they had to pop absolutely aye and despite the fact Daryl's in this and he's not the subject matter uh, I like it so I like that it makes the, it makes the cut and, yeah. Uh, I so far in these, 
in doing this, is I've always managed to get flowers into an image oh, at man. some point. So I good on you. Uh, I'm motivated. continuing on that. That's yeah. my <laughs> calling card. Fantastic. Uh, so then I tried to get a couple. I think that this was the just kind of met uh, just met where he was yeah. actually properly. He's looking in the vicinity. Of yeah, he's looking a little bit. I'm not scared of you, but I'll go. Let's smell that again. <laughs> smell that again, Frank. Oh, let's see, there's the flower. Then he's like, oh. no. Someone walking on the other side of the wall is like, what? The <laughs> smell <laughs> again, Frank. Smell. Um. This was Daryl did a much better job of getting you and Franco an organised um, poses. Yeah. Whereas this, you're looking the right way. Franco's side he's going to go home. home. I get the, I'm getting the feeling from about being followed or about to be pounced. <laughs> what that? And this was this is not quite my favourite of the bunch, but this this is very reminiscent of the for me of the Arctic Monkeys album cut. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I love these ones. And he's, he's, I did, I did play away. about with trying to put it, mirror you the other way. Right. Because that, then that would have been in keeping with the album. But in fact, you've got some text on your truck. Yeah. I made it difficult and I wasn't going to get into the photo yeah. shop. Yeah. Thank you. Ah, yeah, it looks, looks magic, actually, the t-shirt. That's so a great photo. then you've got a nice open expression. This for me is my favourite. I'm still struggling as to why I'll talk about it. There's something about the colours and the look, and the sort of casual the the the, the, ju- the jacket in the hand and the yeah. cigarette in the other. Oh yeah, yeah, I can see the jacket now. Yeah. yeah, that's that's a that's a lovely photo, man. And again, <laughs> this probably doesn't work, but I quite like the fact that we've got the Citadel yeah. here, which just like hangs out in a place. Yeah, because a lot of the others are. There's nothing to say here specifically. Yeah, absolutely. And we've got the we end on the one of you that you're well and partly where you grew up. Of course. Um but that, that, that's good. Yeah, that is good. Yeah. That's what totally. I've got that in a frame at the house. The yeah. fuck poster. Got a new one. And then this is just a kind of almost like a week at a holiday snap desk type thing. Yeah, that's um my nan and papa's house. Yeah. These are slightly out of sequence. There's one that ended up at the front somehow, which was, oh yeah, the the writing <laughs> of <laughs> Frank was off. He's off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, fuck card hats on a health and safety sign. And that is well, I said. Well turned out great, man. Well done. There was a. I want to say how many did though. Ah yeah, yeah, a lot. <laughs> quite a few, but I was actually quite pleased because there was quite a few where. Just to get Frank in the right position. Yeah, no, nah, that turned out amazing. But so, Daryl, we had an argument with us last night about whose were better. <laughs> we'll say another person, not yeah, is that right? Yeah. We, we, all, we can always go, so what do you want to find the scenes first? Or, uh, do we need to show behind the scenes? Maybe not, actually. Go. I'll go black and white first. So, um, I go through the phases with my photography right now. Portrait-wise, personally, I got me into portraits with a couple of photographers, but the main one I name I really like is Simon Murphy. He usually does like a kind of full body shot right. in Glasgow, South Side, and he does it on film. But obviously, doing it on digital, but I kind of like putting my own spin on it. Yeah, uh, his is like everything in focus. I quite like the more shallow depth of field look, but I, I love having the kind of urban, like say, like the decaying walls. I had a shot with crystal and stuff like that. I love all that as a background, but. This is a black and white album first, and then we'll move on to the colours. That's great. I get um, great ears. This one just, the dog is the, the star of the show. Aye, as it should be. Um, Edit-wise, just kind of darkened everything, uh, except from the main subject and get the dog's eyes proper sharp. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice and slack, That's a cool. That's um, cool. More, my photos will be, if they're vertical, they're cropped five by four, which is like the Instagram, you like hit it out, that'll be the most... Right, okay. real estate or like six by four for like standard shots yeah and lad yeah this is the one with the the guardrail trying to get you both through it i was annoyed though because the dog isn't in focus but you are i couldn't i tried to up the the aperture so there was like more in focus but by the time i did that the dog was away nah, cool so but it's, it's, what, draw the it's, yeah. it's a bit different i, I like yeah, i think that's a great yeah, shot that's great that, i really like this one yeah. uh, Bleeding lines of the lane behind 
the old entrance to the yeah. or something. Yeah, so you get that. Just stand Crawl Wales, Crawl Wales Citadel, or whatever it was called. Mm-hmm. And I think the dog's looking as well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that, uh, That's where you did, a, you, you did a much better job than I did. The, the dog was always... I just kept shouting him, Pluckle. Yeah, see, that, I tried to get him to sit, but I keep forgetting that because he's dead young, he hasn't figured out that he can sit. And he's back to me, you know, he's, if he, he's always going to look like, well, I expect a treat, yeah. Big time, so I'm going to face him. Whereas if he'd face the other way, he wouldn't look as if he's pooping, <laughs> which is kind of what he does look like, but he would definitely. Oh. And this is one, uh, I like dog photos, take a lot of like <laughs> mom and mums and dads, but I just wanted one that looked like proper, like, wet, like, wet eyes for the emotional. Absolutely. Thing. What are we smashing? See yourself, Franco. Oh, and then got your kind of more standard portrait here of you. I mean, look ancient. You've got a great face. Oh, like, being <laughs> you got like a, a lovely, lovely compliment. I know. I keep, I keep I say these compliments on the podcast, but I'm thinking objectively as like a photography subject rather than a person. But you've got really, you've got like nice, kind eyes, but then a great kind of expressive face. Like, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed the the photos and stuff. I appreciate that. And I once get told I had a really long face. Long face, yeah. I can't really talk about that either. But I didn't know. I mean, I, I don't know if it, I don't think I do, but it was, well, it was a family member that said it. So I've got one. He's got one. Was it? Was it your sister when you were fighting? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> your long face, Dick. Well, uh, then this is you outside your old you know, your grand's place, right? Yeah, that's exactly that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I tried to make it just kind of really proper, sharp to you again. Mm-hmm. Um, I said it in the last podcast as well, my. I'll get the eyes and stuff sharp, but then I'll go over with like a little brush in the eyes and the nose just to really, because that's the part that like connects you to somebody. So if they're like proper sharp and can close calling out to you, then it kind of. So I, you sharpen them more than sort of the rest of the face, for example. Yeah. Sometimes I'll even take yeah. the clarity down on the body. Sometimes it makes the skin look a bit nicer, but as long as the eyes are sharp, because they're the. I think humans naturally go to the eye because that's where you connect with someone. Yeah, yeah. So you try and make them like dead sharp. That's brilliant. Yeah. That's a lovely photo again. And then I want to the colour memory. Please do it for me, Stray. <laughs> I know, nearly over. He's done well. He's, he's been very well behaved. Do you want the burger over? That will be all right. Save that. Won't let Ralph see that, will we? He'll tear that up. It's <laughs> wrecking the joint. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Okay, is your colour photos? Couches. Okay, these ones had the, the shades on and all that. Uh, yeah. Looking happy. Yeah, actually, I've got a, what randomly one of the things that I've collected the most over the years is sunglasses. I've got a ludicrously large collection. But yeah, it's good there. Mm-hmm. It's having like a panic. I had a bit of a panic the other day. I'm like to my wife, I've literally got my wife and my, my father in law, Mick, in the living room, and I'm like, I've come in like fucking sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> I need, I'm doing photos, I need to know my sunglasses look cool. Yeah, I've right. never really worn those ones, I bought them, and the only time they've ever really been out is my cousin John wore them to my wedding. Right. That's the only time they've actually ever been out of the house, I think, so. I thought I came across a photo on your Instagram feed that had... Of wearing them? I, they looked very, well, if not, those are very similar. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe, I mean, maybe. I sometimes say things without bag-checking myself, so there's every chance. There's every chance, but I don't know. <laughs> So this one, I actually took it out and put it in behind the scenes and you were like, put it back in, right? I thought that had to be in, yeah. Yeah, it's a belt off. I thought that had to go in. Yeah. I like that one, but I was more, I think the mood I was in was I just was like, I want these to be like cool porn no. And this is cool, but it was like, I, it's like a nice, happy. But it's a very yeah. happy, seasidey yeah. kind of feel to it. No, I want it to be gritty and fucking cool. None of your fucking seaside fish. Then you realise you're taking photos of the goofiest guy in town and all. <laughs> that's the most you can get out of his face. Ah, it's a belt. Ah, like it, the dog. Yeah, you and the dog look cool, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty much the same colour as my jeans. Um, there's a few just up against walls, either straight yeah. or at an angle. Um, yeah. I like it. Smiling, different expressions and stuff. Yeah. I like this one, just like that. Little, putting the camera right in the ground for that. And you got the shot of, like, up in the wall while mm-hmm. you're sitting there, right? Yeah. And this is the kind of wall thing I'm talking about, which is, I love that as a... I kind of backdrop so I'm a really nice wall you know, I, I spotted that I was uh, where was I going to I think it was Pets at Home actually and I spotted that wall I was like I'm going to say to Dave about that 
He's trying to press it at start. It's like, I'm going to the wall game, you know. Good on you as a belter. And then just more kind of shallow dip the field ones. Yeah. Next to the tennis courts. Mm. Yeah, that Cologne is good, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Such a handsome wee guy. Such a handsome Handsome big guy. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, that's it. Those sunglasses are. They're just, they are, they're cool, man. I, sun, I sunglasses are that cool thing because you've got to get them to suit your face, and a lot of people don't get it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too many people go straight for the obvious ones and they don't always suit. No. But yeah, Ooh, uh, so deals. I have missed, yeah. <laughs> Did you, have you seen that thing? Sorry, just before, before we just say anything else. But... <laughs> Hey, uh, have you seen that thing that's happening to streamers? Like they've got like indents in their heads. No, it's fucking wild. Well, loads of these streamers. Well, one guy shaved his head. I think he was just shaving his head, and he was like, as he's doing it, he's like, I've got fucking indentation. So he put it on the internet, but like, you know, like, I've got an actual fucking indent in my head. Then loads of these other guys have done the same thing and found out that they've actually got this like full on like where that wow. part is. Just how about the same like gamers and that? Then? Yeah, they're all game. Aye. And it's like people with their phones and like where they sit in their pinky yeah. and yeah, like iPhone pinky. Yeah. Straight wing with revolver and probably devolving into like hammerhead sharks. Yeah, pretty it. much. Let's punch by Ben Head. <laughs> I've seen mangled hands. Yeah. <laughs> On that lovely visual. <laughs> Aye, massive thank you for you and for oh, you know, it's coming on. What's good, a great time. Class. I'm all... But we think we'll, we'll have to have you back for season two because there's uh, a lot of questions we didn't get spot out. Yeah. We didn't even talk about, like, space. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. things that I know loads about. <laughs> actually, that is probably that's sadly true, actually. Um, no, let's, let's, we'll do it again. I'm happy up for it. Yeah, but yeah, we're a bigger boy. You can probably... We can do Franco's album part two. Yeah, absolutely. I can do. <laughs> we can get him chasing balls and... Yeah. Yeah, he'll one day start bringing them back. He's only he only does it every so often. He, he half gets it. He half gets the whole concept of bringing a ball back, but some of the puppies will like to get distracted very easily. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. yeah. But no, thank you. We're, 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 we loved it. Didn't say thanks, Franco. Yes, Franco. Mr. Whippy. Yeah, Mr. Whippy. <laughs> no better way to Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Cheers. Thanks.